Welcome to another episode of In Range. I'm here today with a very old antique pistol. This is an original Smith & Wesson Model 1 Second Edition. Uh, they made a number of these, a lot of these, during the American Civil War, and they were used on both sides. They are very small, as you can see. My hand, essentially it's the same size as my hand. They hold seven rounds of 22 short, which back in the day was chambered, of course, in black powder. These started being produced in 1857 because Colt's patent on the revolving cylinder concept expired in 1856, and this is the first gun manufactured by Smith & Wesson. So there's a lot of history in this gun, not only that it was used militarily by both the United States Federal Army, but the Confederacy as a backup self-defense pistol, but also the first self-contained cartridge used in a military service, but also the first gun manufactured by Smith & Wesson themselves. This particular one, looking at the serial number, appears to have been made around 1865. It is possible that this actual gun was actually carried in the Civil War, but they made a lot of these before that and after that, and they were used extensively up through the 1880s. 22 short, by modern standards, is quite diminutive and not considered a powerful enough cartridge. But back in the day, seven rounds of this in your pocket as a backup gun seemed like a pretty good idea. It also happens to load and unload unusually. It's called the tip bump for a reason. So you push this little cylinder, this little spring latch here, the barrel actually opens up and the cylinder comes out. This is how you load it. When you're done, you unload it with this convenient unloading rod on the gun. <laughs> Clear. Reload it, stick it back in, close it on up. It is a single action, meaning you have to cock it to fire it for each round that you wish to fire. It actually has a spring-loaded rear sight and a front blade, which are a little hard to see, but surprisingly more accurate than you'd expect. So I'm gonna shoot this right now at the backup gun match, and then I'm gonna to come to you at the end with some conclusions. So another interesting thing about this particular revolver being the first bored through cartridge revolver by Smith & Wesson is that Rollin White had the patent for a bored through cylinder. They didn't want to make Rollin White a partner in the Smith & Wesson company, so they paid him a royalty per every one of these guns made to ensure that they didn't violate the patent. Money. So the match is over, and uh, I was the only one shooting the uh, backup revolver in this match, so I technically won that division, one out of one. Um, almost everyone here out of 28 shooters was using some sort of semi-automatic. There was, I think, one other full-size revolver, which is a different division than this. Um, out of those 28 shooters, I came in 18th with this little Civil War pistol. Now. Uh, that said, this thing, I can see why this was popular, even up into the 1880s. It fits cleanly in your pocket. It's easy to conceal. It's actually accurate enough with the sights. I made hits today that I was quite surprised about. But really, sights and aiming with this seems irrelevant. This is a close quarters pistol for close quarters self-defense. And, well, 22 short is by no means something that we would want to rely on by modern standards. In 1865, seven rounds of this in someone's face would probably be quite a deterrent, and I can see why a lot of soldiers opted to carry one of these if they could get their hands on one. Truly a very influential design. You don't see anything quite like it today, not really. Um, for the match, uh, you can't get black powder 22 short. It's not realistic. So what I used was CB rounds, but when I chronographed it, it appears to be eh, about 75 feet per second less than the recorded speeds for 22 black powder short. For what we're shooting today, paper and steel targets, it really didn't matter. In fact, it even knocked over one steel target today. Um, so with 22 black powder, you'd actually get a little more than I was getting out of these 22 shorts uh, CBs. Um, I would not recommend using even CBs in these antique pistols, even though I did it today on this video, because I wouldn't want you to cause damage to your guns. That said, in my opinion, the 22 CB shorts are 
safe in these. Uh, there's not enough pressure here to worry about. And I've shot this quite a bit with that. It had no issues whatsoever. So in summary, completely viable backup self-defense pistol, especially by Civil War standards. Incredibly interesting as really the first military used cartridge, self-contained cartridge weapon. Um, the first weapon made by Smith & Wesson. And here it is, 1865 pistol, still working today on the range in 2021. Uh, I want to thank everyone out there that's a Patreon supporter. You helped me acquire the ammunition and this gun to do this video for you today. In range is completely uh, supported by viewers only, people like you. No sponsors, no overlords. Smith & Wesson did not send this as a demo gun. Uh, strictly you, the viewer. If you are one of them, thank you. If you'd like to consider it, you can find us at patreon.com slash inrangetv. If you can't, I do understand. The next best thing you can do is subscribe to the channel, and even more importantly, share the video organically with your friends. Be the organic algorithm that YouTube sometimes is not. Either way, thanks for watching.